The following podcast is brought to you by the Jonas Podcasting Network, found exclusively at wrestlingwithjonas.com. Welcome to episode 11 of Work the Left Side. Uh, I'm joined this week by uh, the ever awesome Ryan Palmer and uh, a newbie who we are popping his podcast cherry, uh, Mick Connolly, uh, joining us to talk about Sting. It's the Sting Spotlight episode. So, yeah, uh, if you watched the midweek message, you know pretty much what to expect. Just kind of touch the tip of the iceberg uh, with Sting matches, so we've talked about them. Uh, have a laugh, and yeah, that's it, really. Um, I do want to do a part two and possibly a part three on this. Uh, yeah, just let us let us know um, in the comments if if you want to see that, if you enjoy the show, um, yeah, just stuff like that. But please, uh, drop us a comment, uh, give us a thumbs up. Uh, if you subscribe, hit notification as well so you know when the when any new video gets uploaded. uploaded. So uh, that's it. So um, hopefully you're still enjoying these episodes. Um, if this is your first episode you've seen, go back and check out some of the previous ones. You know, we've had Mark Haskins, RJ Singh, Molly Spartan, Paramount Wrestling, Sean Only. Uh, and we've had Mr. Palmer on numerous times um, as well, which uh, the guy's awesome. It's always a blast. So, yeah, go check him out and uh, enjoy the episode. And I will see you soon. Right. So we have episode 11 We're in a double digits officially plus one. So I am joined this week by the ever lovable, the adorable Mr. Ryan Palmer. And we are introducing Mr. Mick Conley. Uh, Hello. I can only apologise for the Geordie stroke Welsh accent. <laughs> I, they, they, they match well together. <laughs> they really do. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it's Mick's first time on the show. Known uh, him years. Uh, good guy. Uh, yeah, we're just looking at Sting this week. Obviously, the guy's been around for ages. Um, even though he also did have uh, a brief stint in the uh, in the E, um, he's always kind of been the anti WWE guy. You know, he he went to Impact to try and elevate them as competition against WWE. Obviously, he's now turned up in AEW. He definitely seems like one of these guys that likes to work for the underdog or kind of likes to help elevate the other company. So we are going to look through some of his. Uh, old matches and yeah just discuss the awesomeness that is sting from uh surface sting to the eric draven inspired sting to joker sting maybe if anyone's watched any of those and then just bits and bobs throughout really so as uh, a guest to the house i am gonna throw it out to mr Connolly first of all oh cheers mate that's right uh, <laughs> um right the first ones I watched, because I've seen it years ago, and I remembered it straight away when you said about the Sting one, was a match he had in 92 with Cactus Jack. Uh, a beach blast. Beach <laughs> blast, sorry. Sorry. And it was one of those ones where WCW, with them being proper weird at the time, they've got the champion in the main event in a Falls Count Anywhere non-title match on your pay-per-view. You know, some some good, good air booking, that is, but never mind. I mean... In, it's Foley in it. Uh, it falls count anyway. It's just it's just absolute mayhem from the start. Um, just battling all over the place. Sting with these uh, ever lovable pink tights on as well, looking really masculine throughout. <laughs> <laughs> and like I say, they just they just battle the hell out of each other for about 10-15 minutes, I think it is. 
But as I say, it's just one of those matches where it doesn't get talked about much. I think Foley, it's on his first DVD, yeah. uh, if I remember rightly. Um, so obviously he thinks very highly of it. Because uh, I think it was all the time when obviously Vader was around and stuff. They I don't think they really knew what to do with him as Cactus Jack. Because one week he was face, the next he was heel, he was with Vader, he was against Vader. It was it was just weird times, but no, the match is match itself is brilliant. And then a bit of a nothing ending with a flying clothesline, flying clothesline, off the top, flying clothesline off the top onto the that horrible rampway that WCW had, um, yeah. and that was it at the end. But so, like I say, it was a bit of a for a really good match, a bit of a nothing ending. <laughs> but why have it as non <clears throat> I'm guessing Sting won. Stay yeah. one, yeah, yeah. 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 It, w- it was um, a brutal match. They're, they're doing stuff on the outside onto concrete. There's no mats anywhere. So you've got Mick doing his, his elbow from the apron to Sting on the floor. And he's doing sunset flips yeah. from the apron to Sting on the floor. So yeah, it's they're both <laughs> fucking um, side rushing leg sweeps to the floor as well. It's just insane stuff. I think you look at it, and I think there's only about probably a minute of the match, if that is actually in the ring. Yeah. The they, rest they... of it is literally on the outside, and Zed, there's no mats or anything. They're just smacking off the floor constantly. Yeah. And for a non-title match on a pay-per-view, it's brutal, and there's just no need for it. <laughs> Jesse Ventura is even saying, why is Sting doing this match? It's so, <sighs> there's, no, there's no reason. It's a non-title match. Why is, it, why is he doing this match? And he just, uh, <laughs> the other commentator, I think it's Shivani, he's just like oh, Jim Ross, right. isn't it? That's, cause that That's, was the one thing yeah. I know it's in 92. It's the commentary team which that I never knew we had, which I wish we'd had more, was Jim Ross and Jesse the Body, <laughs> who were yes. just perfect foil for each other. They were. Oh, yeah. Uh, but as, yeah. as he was saying, just why, why is he in this match, <laughs> putting his body on the line, just breaking himself up? It was just ridiculous. But it, I think, it's a, it is a good match. But I think that week, I think he was aligned with Vader. But then I think two weeks later he wasn't. <laughs> yeah. And then he lost his ear and then they fell out. That was it. Yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd be a little pissed off if that happened to me as well, in fairness. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's, that's uh, rightly so. But yeah, I think Foley has mentioned this match in his book and he's, he's just got all the love in the world for Sting. I think because at the time he just like, you know, credits Sting with putting him over really, really absolutely, you know, just letting it, letting it be a 50 50 match. Uh, Mick got his spots in, from what I remember. And obviously, yeah. yeah, Sting won, but it, it, Mick thought it elevated him um, within the office as well, kind of thing. So, yeah, it's it's one of those matches that is highly regarded by the talent. So, um, Mr. Palmer, but well, that crossed that one off because that was on my. <laughs> um, sorry, <but> mate. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we're going back a couple of years to 1988. It's a clash of the champions uh, for the NWA championship versus a Ric Flair. Um, for some reason, JJ Dillon's in a shark cage suspended above the ring. Not too sure of the background of the whole match itself. Possibly JJ Dillon um, and the rest of the horsemen were fucking around with Sting and not being too nice to him or whatever else. So JJ Dillon suspended in the shark cage. Uh, this is like a 45 minute time limit I think it goes 48 minutes or something weird it's a really really long match um, Tony Schiavone and JR are on commentary in this one Tony Schiavone sounds older then than he does now <laughs> <laughs> the Benjamin JR. Button of wrestling <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> he's probably got a moustache as well and curly hair at that point, he looks older as well. It's, just like, it's really weird. And JR's got a really high voice as well. It's one of those starting off really, really slow, meth- slow, methodical pace, uh, test of strengths, chops, drop kicks, out the ring action. Uh, but there's a really long bear hug spot as well. So you're just like, what the hell? How is this a classic? Um, but the, the bear hug spot goes on for a long time. That's the only downfall of the match. Um, the rest of it, um, stinger splash, uh, tumic drops, all the usual old school stuff, 10 count head punches from the uh, top rope, uh, more chops, 
I think I, I chose this match because around about that time, around about 88, I was getting in uh, wrestling. I was, well, American wrestling itself because NWA was on TV like four o'clock in the morning. I, it? I, I, ITV on ITV. a Tuesday morning. Yes. Set a tape for it every Tuesday. Yes. <laughs> set a tape. <laughs> TV plus nine. I ain't trusting that shit. Manually set the video. The times were always yeah. off as well. I'd always either have ten minutes before it or lose the last ten minutes when I recorded it. I remember yeah. all those days. You just learn. <laughs> set the tape five minutes before, <laughs> ten minutes after. You yeah. get the whole show. Um, so yeah, there was there was that cultural significance to it as well. Um there's loads in the air falls in the last couple of minutes. Um and there's judges as well in this match. Um, Jason Hervey from the Wonder Years is one of the judges. <laughs> is that the older brother? Yes. He, at the time, was friends with Eric Bischoff. Um, and I think even years later, he might have been one of the people that tried to buy WCW. I could be wrong about that, but at this particular period in time, he was friends with Eric Bischoff. Um, there's four judges. He's one of the judges. There's a one of the other judges is someone from leave it to beaver or some weird fucking show it's not one of the so, headbangers is it <laughs> like beaver cleavage but uh, but there's the, the time limit goes and they have to score the match because they're just in the last three minutes after all this match has been like test of strengths um arm ringers working on body parts uh bear hug spots rest spots submission spots then three minutes to go, three minutes to match. And they, just, they start chaos. They are pinfall attempts, rollers, pinfall attempts, figure four attempts, scorpion deathlock attempts. Sting gets Flair in the scorpion deathlock in the last 30 seconds. And, and uh, Flair's just like, oh, he's really, really hanging on. He's hanging on. He's hanging on. He's hanging on. Ding, 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 ding. Time's up. So they have to go to the judges. And the, the judges score it to a Sting and to a Flair. And, and um, Flair retains. <laughs> Why wouldn't you have an odd number of judges? Bizarre <laughs> <laughs> choice. WCW. WCW. Oh, oh we lost his video. <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. There he is. Fire. Uh, was that during the time as well when obviously you couldn't throw him over? Because I, I, I remember because I was the same. I used to stay up or record like yeah WCW like stupid o'clock in the morning. Um, I can remember watching it at one point. I was kind of watching it is when I was getting to WWF at the time. Uh, but they used to have that old rule where if you threw him over the top rope, you got disqualified. Yeah, that went that on for years. That that weird rule that went into the mid nineties. I think that rule did though. In fairness. It was yeah, it's only when it became like that. Nitro and stuff, wasn't it, that they kind of changed it. Yeah. So it's like set, same set of rules across the board or something. Yeah, it was but a yeah, very strange it. rule. A very yeah. strange rule. So, I'm presuming at some point there was lots of times where he'd done the gorilla press slam on Flair as well. You, there you was. To, you always loved to do that on him. Even <laughs> the, the, the Flair flop at one yeah. stage as well. <laughs> so, yes. That was my yeah. first match. Awesome, because again, I know you you like Flair. Um, we need to do a Flair episode at some point, just so I can be educated. Because I only really know Flair from WWE, so these are the kind of matches that I should uh, be watching. <laughs> you need about three months' notice, I think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go back and watch the to... <laughs> to get the time back. But... It's, yeah, but I know Flair, but Sting Flair, Sting's um, said numerous times, this was the Clash of Champions match won it, where he's basically, he's credited this as being his launching pad. You know, this was the match that put him on. I think this match only came like two years after he's kind of signed properly by WCW, because I think he was still part of a tag team with the Ultimate Warrior in like 86 and stuff. Blade Runners, yeah. yeah. Well, 88, 88 would have been Clash 1, wasn't it? Mm. I think it was. Yeah. Which I think was, was I think that was was it was that the, not the one they put on at the same night as WrestleMania Four? Could have been. I was sure there was one they put on the same night as WrestleMania Four to try and compete with it with Sting and Flair. <laughs> <laughs> you well, know, as you do. Yeah. No. Uh, so I was say if it was WrestleMania Three, they might have had a chance, but Four was all right. Uh, just because my man won the title at the end. So um, I'm going to jump forward because I knew you guys. Are you know the 
the history buffs. Um, so I thought I would be the obscure guy and watch a load of TNA. So I first one I want to talk about is the Sting versus Bully race. It was from Slammiversary 09. Um, obviously, there was this was in the middle of the whole Aces and Eights storyline. So What's that? Yeah, Bully race champion. That long ago. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which obviously a massive uh, Sons of Anarchy was a massive thing at the time, which I can only presume was a huge influence on this concept for you know a faction. Uh, but I remember at the time uh, watching it, Ace of the Nights was awesome. Um, I won't have a bad word said against it, but every week there was something new twist to it, some new member being revealed. It even made you know Bischoff's kid look pretty cool. And uh, but this one was. Uh, it was just a uh, no holds barred street fight, as you would expect. Bully Ray's champ challenging his ECW days. It was just like weapons just going all out. And Aces and Eights got involved. Yeah, Taz on commentary as well at this point was a member of Aces and Eights. Is so, it getting hot? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aces, just... Aces and Eights, Taz. Oh, God. <laughs> It, it was funny though, man, because he was just kind of like totally non and everything. Like, oh, I don't know what's going on. Nothing, you don't tell me nothing. He's like, you sneaky little bastard. You know what's going on. Come on, Tess. Uh, but it's made me think because it was, I remember everybody joined the Champa Gargano match when uh, Champa sort of, you know, started ripping up the ring mats and pulling up the, you know, the, the coverings uh, off the board, yeah, yeah, yeah. all that sort of stuff. Bully does that at the end of this match to Sting. And he's hitting him with like move. He hits him with like three different moves um, on just on the wooden boards, and uh, trying to annihilate him. And then you get all the aces and eights come out. Um, I want to say it was where's oh, what's his bloody name? Where's Briscoe? Where's Briscoe? Where's Briscoe? That's it. Yeah, Briscoe Brisco came out. Like Luke Gallows there. Um, who for some reason I, I, I sometimes forget that he was even in TNA. Yeah, uh, but yeah, so your doc was there. Uh, Mike, know, Mike Knox Devon. as well. Yeah, yeah. Knox. Devon, Knox. Uh, Knox. Knox, sorry, Knox as he was there. And uh, else then Mr. Anderson, letter. <laughs> Mr. Anderson came out at the end to make the uh, the big uh, the big save. Oh, Brooke Hogan came out as well halfway through because she was in the story like she was married <laughs> yeah. to Blue Wave. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just like I'm getting all these flashbacks. I was like, I remember really enjoying this at the time, but now, you know, I watched it out of context, just watching one match. I was sat there like, what the fuck is going on? And I was just like, yeah, oh, yeah, Brooke Hogan, yep, okay. Yep, of course, yeah, she's married to Bully Way. Totally forgot about that. Sting's trying to protect her and, you know, get her to the back while he's railing on Bully Ray with a chair. <laughs> Kept calling her Mark. <laughs> Kept calling her Mark. <laughs> yes. Yes, she did. <laughs> <laughs> that distracts Sting. Go to there. Low blow. Uh, but, yeah, it's just good. It's a good match, though, to be fair. If you've never seen... Uh, Bully Ray in singles. If you only know Bully Ray as one half of the Dudley Boys, um, I was a big fan of his solo run in TNA. I thought, you know, I loved him in that. I absolutely he, loved him as a solo star. Do you know everything. who I am? <laughs> yeah, it's Bully amazing. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, this this is one of those matches um, you'll find out on YouTube. I basically uh, tried to stick with matches that you could find on YouTube, just in case people who are watching don't have access to the network. Um, so yeah, go on YouTube, just search in Sting matches, and this is one of the top ones on there. But yeah, uh, Slammiversary, TNA, Sting versus Bully Ray seems totally um, out of the box as it is anyway. It's not two guys I would have thought of uh, put together. Yeah, it's an awesome match, just absolute just a fuck fest by the end of it. It's just very reminiscent of WCW. A lot of gaga. Nice. Please. Right. So back to me. Right. I'll go a little out of the box now. Um, it's still safe, I think, but it's from 94, from Full Brawl. And it's him against Vader, against the, um, what's it called again? The Guardian Angel. Isn't that? Who, that's, that's Big Boss Man. <laughs> it's Big Boss Man coming out with a big red berry on and stuff like that. And it's got some of the stupidest rules I've ever seen in wrestling. And I absolutely loved it when I watched this back. It was amazing because it, it's a it's a triple threat match. But before the match, they do a coin flip, a three way coin flip, to see the first two people fight each other, and then the winner of the first match fights the winner of the coin toss. 
<laughs> now, I don't know how you have a three-way coin toss. So the, the, they've got three of them in the ring. There's three people with a coin. They all flip a coin. And they're like, Sting's won. So Sting gets himself in the back. So you get Vera against, as I say, Boss Man, or as I said, Guardian Angel, he's called at that time. <laughs> and, I mean, for about goes on about five well not even not even 10 minutes but it's a really good match actually boss man puts himself across really well um he gets his spot in boss man slam and everything on vera and everything as well he keeps selling selling the back injury trying to slam him and then all of a sudden hits the sl- boss man slam on him and then obviously harley race gets involved vera ends up winning that one and then sting <laughs> comes out so then it's sting against vera but they then took in as well that the matches have got a 15-minute time limit. And then from there, it's also then, if nobody's won after 15 minutes, they then do five minutes sudden death. And then if nobody's won after that, the winner of it is decided by the first person who uh, first person to knock the opponent down. <laughs> Hell. But again, it's WCW. For some reason, this made sense to them when they were setting it up. So as I said, so in this match, you've got a three-way coin flip, which you can win. And then, as I said, you can go sudden death and then knocking an opponent down. And it just, so as I say, it just goes on. <laughs> it goes on. So obviously Sting versus Vader goes to the 15-minute time limit. No winner from that. It goes on again then. The five minutes is up. That goes again. Then So then it's, net, you know, knock first one to knock somebody down. So then, obviously, they're going at it, constantly close lines, and everyone's doing the, oh, going to fall over thing. No, nobody does. And Harley Race gets involved, distracts the referee, like, sort of halfway down the thing. Sting knocks Vader down. But, obviously, the referee doesn't see it. So Vader gets up then, and then hits Sting with, like, a, I can't remember what, what the finish was now. I think it was, like, a powerball or something like that. He hits Sting with it, something. And the referee just happens to turn around then and see that Sting's down. It's like the match is over. And as I say, it's just such a stupid match. It's so funny and it's so much fun to watch it. It's just amazing. It's just WCW just, I think in the early 90s, just come up with some of their own rules and just thought, ah, screw it. It'll be good for a laugh, if anything. (laughs) (coughs) Yeah. For five minutes, sudden death, but surely the 15 minutes is sudden death. You get a pinfall, that's it. (laughs) But yeah, but then it's, it's, as I said, it's then five minutes overtime. Again, sudden death. (laughs) <laughs> it's the use of the word sudden death that annoys me yeah. like you know oh well you know yeah but it was just the it's fact that after 20 minutes then they're expecting like somebody not to be knocked over <laughs> <laughs> like all of a sudden they can take clotheslines and block slams and everything like that but they could <laughs> for the first 20 minutes <laughs> oh no 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 it's the sudden surge of uh, adrenaline kicks in but at yeah 20 minutes. just but again, the, when I saw the match on, like, sort of flicking through the network and stuff, it come up as Guardian Angel. I was like, who the hell is that? And then it's straight away, it's just like, oh, that's the boss man. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and he's there, but I see he's got this stupid red berry on and everything. It was, it was just, as I said, it's so much fun. I recommend watching that back on the network, though. So it's Fall Brawl 94. As I said, it's like ridiculous. Like boss man in the beret, like, like you know, like, yeah, just being in the Warriors or something. I'm sure he's got like a white t shirt and then trousers with suspenders on as well. With it, <laughs> I, loved, I loved how many terrible characters boss man had in WCW. He had loads, <laughs> so many. I think it was big, it was a big Bubba was one of them, big, <laughs> big Bubba Rogers, I think. yeah, oh, Ray Trailer. Shit. That was his own name as well. I think that's his shoot name. <laughs> <Ray Trailer. laughs> it's ah, oh. so, Mr. Parker. But yeah, can uh, you top the god Beat that. Uh, I, I can't top that one. <laughs> Not with the next one. The next one's a deadly serious one. <coughs> it's Sting versus Hogan, Starcade '97. It's oh. Sting's first match. Uh, after the NWO have taken over WCW, Sting's been watching from the rafters for <laughs> for like eighteen odd months, and he's gone like from it. yeah, he's gone from uh, he's gone from surfer Sting to uh, Crow Sting, and he's deadly serious. hasn't said a word to anyone, um, and he's now going to be the savior of WCW, the Avenger, the Avenging Angel. Um, so it starts with Michael Buffer 
for some reason, he's the ring announcer. <laughs> he does his usual stick there. Let's get ready to rumble, all that kind of stuff. Um, he was there for years, though, I think, in WCW, where yeah, just for the main event, they'd bring him out and stuff. <laughs> he was getting paid some fucking money as well. Fucking five figures, apparently. Um, you get the music, you get Hogan doing the belt thing. Doom, 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 doom. And you get the uh, sting entrance with the, the dialogue, which I've, I've written down. It was like, when a man's heart is full of deceit, it burns up and dies, and a dark shadow falls over his soul. From the ashes of a once great man has risen a curse, uh, a wrong that must be righted. We look into the skies for a vindicator. Wow. Someone assert, uh, to strike fear into the black hearts of the same man who created them. The battle between good and evil has begun. Against an army of shadows lies the dark warrior, the prevailer of good, with a voice of silence and a mission of justice. This is Sting. And then you get the... How much better would that have been had he come out wearing pink with bleach blonde hair? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. So, uh, God. This... Again, it's, it's... I don't think it's a real classic, but it's again it's a significant uh, it's like laden match. Yeah, because of that entrance, that really spooky entrance. Because of the the fact that it's his first match um, in eighteen months, trying to he he's the light of opposing the darkness, which is the NWO. Um, even though the he's irony, just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. very ironic. Um, the the. the Match is okay. There's not much going on in the match. Hogan, there's lockups. Hogan's working the crowd. Sting's working the crowd. Sting's really deadly serious and stoic. Um, Hogan hits a leg drop on Sting. Gets the three count. But for some reason, Bret Hart comes down to the ring. Doesn't allow the pink... Doesn't allow the, the ring. Ah. The ring I couldn't the ring. I can't remember why this way he did this. Um, some sort of uh, Montreal 97 screw job callback. Um, he doesn't allow the ring bow. He restarts the match. Bunch of NWA guys come in, NWO guys come in. Sting fights them off. Sting gets a stick, spling a, Sting a splash on Hogan, uh, locks in the Scorpion Deathlock. Hogan taps or says, Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Sting wins the belt. All the WCW guys, including the Giant, come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we've won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it goes <laughs> off air. Like that. It's, it's, it's a, one of those culturally significant or significant to the time kind of match. Nothing much really happens. Just that that kind of like icon iconic uh, type of match. It's got to be the only time I thing I could think of where there's been like an eighteen month build. You know, for like a character, obviously Sting was like you know the face of WCW. Mm. Um, to have him off or have him not in a match for eighteen months. That's didn't they do long term blood? Didn't they do like yeah. a year or something like that? Well, obviously with a fake Sting and everything, and then he turned his back on everyone. And that's why he went away because they've done the whole fake Sting thing at War Games, and then he he come out during it. Decked everyone, and then just basically said to WCW because Luger and stuff was saying, you know, yeah. you, you know, you, 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 they didn't believe it wasn't him and stuff, and then he just sort of middle fingered them all and just disappeared for a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I watched the end of that war game. So I thought, oh, I watched, I watched WCW match, and yeah, I had like war games where the fourth entrance for NWO was Sting, and they all came in like, you know, he still looked like surface Sting, but with dark hair and black and white sort of face paint, and then number four for Team WCW came in and it was Sting. And it was like, oh shit, okay, yeah, that's fake sting. And then you beat everybody up for five minutes, annihilated them all, basically flipped off Luger, and then just went back, went back up the aisle again. It's like, okay, so that, yeah, I don't know my WCW, so that, I don't know if that's the point then when he vanished for like 18 months and uh, came back as, you know, it can't rain all the time. <laughs> so, <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> Uh, but no, I, that's like you say, right? It's, it's an iconic match. It's definitely one of those. It's on the Mount Rushmore of Sting moments. I would sort of say, just as I say, for the build, man. You've got the yeah. company have given this guy eighteen months build. That must have the buy rates on that must have been crazy mad. Must have been through the roof. 
Didn't you Go say Kid, Kid Cash had that gimmick before? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kid Cash used the Crow gimmick in about 94, 95 time. Uh, don't know how long for, like, but yeah, he, he, he used it for a while. Uh, he, well, uh, he also used the name, so named Jericho before yeah. Jericho. So, uh, Kid Cash, man, he's, uh, he's a trendsetter. <laughs> I'm still sucking up to him because I hope to have him on at some point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. So again, you two are covering the iconic matches and the you know those great moments in history. And the Hogan. Covering... <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm covering TNA, so that kind of sums it all up. Uh, but this one, this is definitely just um, it's one of those matches in history. Again, um, it's, it's an iconic. TNA match, uh, Bath Glory 07, Kurt Angle versus Sting. Uh, it is what it is, man. At this point, um, it's just Kurt Angle. It's still early doors. It is TNA run as well, 07. Um, he's, he's still going. I think he's obviously managed to heal himself up a bit. The guy can go again. Whatever fears WWE had uh, before letting him go kind of thing. It's, it's gone, man. I think he's healed himself up. Uh, yeah, him and Sting just put on just a really good match. The fans are buying into it. Um, you get interference by Karen. Uh, I think, I want to say, Nash yeah, as well. Nash, Kevin Nash. Nash. Up. <laughs> That's looking old, though, man. Nash, Kevin, Nash is, yeah, with, with like, the pay, Nash with looks alright now. <laughs> he looked alright then. He looks really with, old. He's got like, he's got like a dress shirt and joggers on and trainers as well. <laughs> 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 really his hair. It's just like yeah. his hair kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, said, yeah. I, I think I watched this one like sort of. A, I think I finished watching this about half past six, just in case nobody, nobody had watched it. So, like I say, it's quite fresh in my mind. But yeah, just Nash, like you say, with a white shirt and joggers on, <laughs> just yeah, looking yeah, awful, just like, looking awful. Not looking very big or sexy. Well, it's oh. looking big. But definitely not looking sexy, man. It's don't let me mum. Don't let me mum hear you say that. She always had a thing for Kevin Nash. Yeah, oh, <laughs> wow. Everyone, everyone, <laughs> so it's, uh, I mean, big Kev. He's normally normally a dapper looking dude, but uh, not on this day. This was a uh, this was a bad day for Kev. So any Diesel fans, don't watch it. Mix mum, don't watch it. Uh, Mix. Yeah, you get the and you get Jeff Jarrett, which was my only tainting point of this match. I mean, this was Sting versus Angle. It didn't need any Gaga. It could have just been a really good one-on-one match. Um, but, obviously, yeah, you had the Kevin Nash thing. And I want to say... Am I right? Jeff, say Jeff Jarrett did turn up in this match. No, Jarrett, Jarrett doesn't turn up. Karen, no, Angle, Karen Angle does. No, no, it's the RVD one I'm thinking of. Sorry, I'm yeah, kind of... Karen turns up because the thing where yeah. Sting has got a restraining order on her. Yes, and he's trying because, to... because <laughs> I think they've done something way. Hadn't Kurt Angle done something like he, I think if I remember on the commentary that said um, that he's attacked Sting's son in like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. a high school football game and stuff. <laughs> really, it's really, really like really questionable. Like you, yeah, you've attacked kids, guys, <laughs> a kid man. He's like, I'm pretty sure they mentioned he was in high school. It's like, whoa, okay, <laughs> you know, this is like getting on Katie Vick sort of thing. <laughs> That's um, some questionable shit right there. But, but the <laughs> thing, the thing with this match is, which obviously, which I watched, like I say I'd watch it about an hour ago. Was the end? Was did you did you notice the the baseball bat where Sting goes to block it and doesn't block it? <laughs> Angle yes. hits him in the head with yes. the bat and busts him open, and Sting just stands there like, no, Ow. no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> a bit though. Tell you what, Angle went for a 450 splash. Yeah, and the, looks, the knees. The and double knees. It, and he did a 360. Um, freaking, I can't remember the name. Finn Balor's finisher. Um, oh, coup de gras. Coup de gras. He did a 360 coup de gras. Fucking <laughs> hell. Like, yeah, seriously, man, it was best up. He went for a 450. Under it rotation. Was... So he just foot planted on Sting's chest. Which is weird because Kurt Angle, for me, still has to look it, despite the fact he never hit it. The best moonsault in wrestling. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Why did he go for the moonsault? I don't know. But yeah, for some reason he thought, oh, I'll go for a 450 splash. Like, no, no, no. It was like uh, Brock trying to the, uh, the shooting stuff. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it was a callback. Could have been a callback to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You but no, the, like I said, the head. I just, I just straight away when I seen it, it was just like Jesus, that shot to the head with the bat. 
and you hear it as well. That's what's even funnier. It's like you literally hear it. It's like a full on clunk off clunk. his head and everything. And then you just look all of a sudden and Sting's just, his head's pissing the blood. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, he's blocked it. It's like, don't think he did, mate. <laughs> oh, oh, there's, there's, there's no blade it's required. Same, cause, again, Tanae, I think, on commentary on that, it's an ideal person because I think Mike Tanae is massively underrated yeah. as far as like commentators that. go. And he, he was one of the reasons for watching TNA back then because he's commentary on them because he's actually so knowledgeable as well about the product and everything. But no, when he's trying to say, no, he's blocked it, it's like, no, he hasn't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry, Mike, you're wrong there. <laughs> you're wrong there, mate. <laughs> he, we the, like you, Mike. the massive gash on his head will say that he didn't. <laughs> but yeah, right, if you haven't seen it, man, uh, Bound for Glory, Kurt Angle, Sting, just for the 360 that he... I forgot the name of the movie again. Uh, Judy Gross. I'm not... <laughs> Judy Gross, man. Seriously, it's a moment. It's just got to be seen. So even I just went, ooh. He just felt his, his feet just go like bang on chest, on Sting's chest. So I'm surprised nobody's actually turned that into a move. That'd be quite impressive. No, uh, it did not, not, not from watching it back. It looked bloody really awful. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like it would fucking hurt. <laughs> yes, you know, that's legitimately. I'd be like, oh shit, am I? <laughs> but Coup de Gras just kind of looks like, oh, yeah, you put a 360 rotation in there. That's just going to hurt. Who's on next? Um, it's Connolly. Yeah. Um, right. Go on. I'll go with this one. Is uh, it's, it's a match from Monday Night Raw in 1995 in November. He has a little uh, about six minute match on Night Raw with Dean Malenko. Ooh. Now obviously 95 Sting against Malenko. When I went on to it, I was just thinking, well, it's <coughs> going to be an absolute squash match. And basically, for about five of the six minutes of the match, it's just Malenko just working Sting over the whole, like the whole way through. It's such a good little match. Um, okay. It was one that was someone somebody pointed like sort of mentioned it was about it, and so I went back and watched it, and it was just like I said, it's only about six seven minutes, but it's such a good match, and not what you would expect, especially like so sort of obviously the finish because you'd think, oh well, if Sting takes the beatings for a bit and everything. He'll end up with the scorpion and everything, and it ends up where he, he wins with like sort of a little roll up and stuff. So he doesn't get pretty much any of his moves and everything. He really does a lot of sort of to show people that Malenko, because in '95 I think he was not that well known, Dean Malenko. So it was like sort of Sting basically putting somebody, just putting somebody in the spotlight there, so that people could see you know this person can work. And it's a wow. really good little match to watch, and I'd highly <laughs> recommend it to anybody. Like sort of, as I say, I think it's. November 95 it's from cool. but I'd definitely recommend going to watch that that's so, why I like you did you find these little nuggets because I think <laughs> both of you knew about that 123 kid um, but heart match on Raw um, so yeah you two guys are just you know these little nuggets of goodness <laughs> Mr Palmer no pressure now but I said you know <coughs> give me a nugget of goodness this is <laughs> this one's fucking off the map. It's from Halloween Havoc 1989. So you've got Surface Sting and Ric Flair versus the Great Muta and Terry Funk. Wow. wow. This <laughs> is yeah, not only that, there's uh, Bruno San Martino is the special guest referee. Not only that, oh, um, Jesus. <laughs> Gary Hart is a second or a Terminator. I don't know why they call him Terminator. Um, and uh, uh, it's Gary Hart and someone else. Fuck. Uh, Ole Anderson is the other um, second. And they both have towels. Why do they have towels? They have towels because this match is in a Thunderdome, an electrified Thunderdome. So if you think what? about, yes. <laughs> Get off. not only that, yes. it, it gets, it it gets better. It gets better. Hold on. If you think of like Hell in a Cell, right, but without a door. So they're all in the, the ring. It gets lowered down. It gets electrified. So they're <laughs> electrified. And the only way to win is if the second throws the towel in for their, um, their team. So pinfalls don't count, submissions don't count, disqualifications don't count. The only way to win is for the fucking uh, seconds of throwing the towel. 
but it, it's odd because it starts off as a normal tag match, as in they're observing tag rules. So, sorry, the tag in and out. To say it, everyone does. I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Just get in there and fight. And fight. But no, yeah. yeah, the tag. The tag. They even hold the fucking tag rope. This is so cordial. It's unbelievable. Wow. <laughs> That's it's a amazing. massive brawl. Um, you've got uh, Flair just chopping the shit out of Muta. Muta chopping the shit out of Flair. Um, you got Sting beating the crap out of, uh, out of Terry Funk. Terry Funk tries to climb the cage at one point. He gets to a corner and he gets stuck. And he's just there like that. And he's just like, oh, I can't go anywhere. So he starts hanging. And... Um, Sting, there's there's ropes from the, the, the cage for some reason. He gets hold of a rope. He swings over to where uh, Terry Funk is. Drop kicks him, <laughs> kicks him in his head. He swings you back. shit all over my Malenko match here, mate. Cheers. <laughs> yeah. he, he does like three or four times, and then he misses one. He gets fucking his leg. Caught in uh, one of the, in in the cage, so he's hanging down. So um, for some reason, Terry Funk decides to climb the cage again, but you can't get out. And he climbs climbs to a point and he gets electrocuted. He's like, ah, shit! So he's just like, Look. <laughs> there's literally no way out of this fucking cage. Muta tries to fucking um, climb the cage and escape. He gets electrocuted. Flair just he Flair beats up Muta. Um, for some reason, oh. Flair gets Funk in the figure four, and um, uh, Sting Sting climbs the top rope, splashes Funk while he's in the figure four. Does it again? <laughs> Funk's just Funk's just like screaming in agony. He's like, <laughs> Muta decides to punch Bruno Sammartino in the face. Bruno Sammartino punches. What, Muta why wouldn't you? <laughs> He gets flung out of the ring. Then Gary Hart comes in the ring. Gary Hart starts fighting with um, Ole Anderson. Ole Anderson punches Gary Hart so hard, Gary Hart's towel flies in the air, <laughs> lands from the ref, lands on Bruno. Bruno like, turns around and he sees Gary Hart without a towel. Yeah, they won. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> that what is match. the most WCW <laughs> match I think I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Awesome. It's yeah, absolutely it's bonkers. <laughs> it just oh. it goes on for ages, and you just like, well, there's why there's there's no tags, there's no pinfalls. Why are you tagging? There's some pinfall attempts. You just no, no, stop. So, so it's just a brawl until the end. Um, it's just oh. I don't know. There's no one's actually blading or getting stabbed with anything. It's just, there's no attempts to try and make anyone submit or quit in any way until that end point. Just seeing Funk locked in the leg lock, taking two fucking stinger splash from the top rope. It's hilarious. Nice. Is that on the network? Yes, that one is on the oh, that, I'm going to find that one as soon as we're doing yeah. this. I've got to go back and watch that. That, <laughs> that just sounds so absolutely amazing. It's unreal. It's a you very are. WCW. <laughs> Great oh. If only they'd use Robocop for that match instead of the 1990. <laughs> oh, God. I saw that you look back at just... Sting. If you look oh. back at Sting's stuff, though, that he's done, he is an absolute legend, don't get me wrong, but some of the crap he's been out to deal with throughout his whole thing, especially in WCW, was ridiculous. The whole, obviously, you've got the Robocop thing, and <laughs> what do you call him, the Shockmaster? <laughs> he's there for he's there for it all. Yes, he is. <laughs> but yeah, he still prevailed, which is why, yeah. as you sort of said, that that in itself, you could have just had a shed load of shit matches. The fact that he still stuck through after all that is just and still lit. going. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> to be fair, man's still sort of smashing it out of the park. Um, I'll just touch on that actually because actually we're talking about all of this. Um, you two guys watched the street fight. From the last AEW pay per view that he did with Darby Allen, not yeah. yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I liked it. I, liked yeah, it. I thought it was no, really I good. It. I thought it was awesome. <coughs> um, 
I thought it was just a really cool. Uh, they kind of nailed the character perfectly. I thought visually and everything yeah. about it was just, yeah, it was just awesome. Fair play. Um, if if you like AEW, if you don't like AEW, uh, this is still just a really good cinematic match, I reckon. Uh, I've seen the arm and the leg cool. bit, the bit with what the arm bit? and the leg thing with uh, Darby Allen, where they do the swing and just chuck it <laughs> the, the, the thing of the window, and, the window. Just, and then the big <laughs> thing of glass just lands on his head oh, after yeah. it as well. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that bit. I haven't seen the match yet. I haven't had a chance to watch it, but I've seen that video because somebody posted it over and I was just the game pissing me down laughing at it. Just like, just, it looks so good and then it just becomes really comedic when that big <laughs> lump of glass or whatever just <laughs> pong on his head. <laughs> but yeah, there's one bit where I think, uh, where, yeah, he's just, he's, he's fighting away and Alan's like three, two stories up and he just throws the bat at Sting. Oh, yeah. Sounds up and catches the bat, and then it's like, I see it, shit game's over now. He's got the bat, he's back again, kind of thing. And yeah, the camera angle just like zooms in, and he just kind of turns his head around, and you just catch it's just sting. It's like, yeah, yeah it's awesome. Um, wasn't there, of, wasn't, isn't there a meme as well when they're walking out, and it's like sort of when it's bring your son to work day or something like that? It's sting. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Oh, that's definitely, you know, that's the five AEW going forward with those two. And they're not even trying to hide it. You know what I mean? It's like when there's was, when there was going to, to, to the complex where the fight was, there was both bezzing down the roads kind of thing. And it's just like, no, oh, look, it looks just like my kind of thing. Oh, it's adorable. Yeah. It's so, yeah, I just wanted to bring that one up because we're not going really to talk about it in full, but it's definitely worth mentioning. If you're watching this because you're a Sting fan uh, and you haven't checked that match out, uh, just definitely go and watch it. It's just awesome stingness. Um, I am going to mention the Sting RVD match. Uh, from, no, I'm not. It's not that match. I'm going to talk about Sting AJ Styles from mm. Bound for Glory uh, 2010. I want to say it was. Um, Sting goes into it as challenger. AJ's champ. And this is old school AJ. This is TNA. Um AJ. We've still got six sides of the ring. Uh, a massive area around the ring as well uh, back in this point. Uh, it, was, it was huge. You had so much room to operate outside of the ring. Uh, it's just so much going on. They're playing like their mutual respect uh, angle. Uh, AJ's just fluid. I, mean, I love AJ in WWE, um, but he's lost a step or two. You know, the dude's like 43, 44. It's understandable. Uh, <laughs> you, you watch this match and this is, is just He's, he's, he's water, man. He's fluid. The guy is just this one spot where he goes through the ropes, turns around, jumps up onto the top rope and jumps back in again. Um, and Sting's just looking at him like, oh, the fuck did you just do that? And it's just a look of like, uh, and they're comparing it to Sting versus Flair from like 20 years prior. They're sort of saying, no, it's role reversal now. You know, like Sting's taking the flare role, Styles is taking the, the Sting role. I don't remember yes. them spots from St- Sting this. Oh, no, no. Flare doing that I spot. Still, I think they actually mentioned it after that spot as well, because I had exactly the same thought. I was like, okay, I like the analogy. I see where you're going with this. It's the passing of the torch. But no, the, the match would not have been any slight <laughs> match. You know, and, and yeah, it's just full of moments of just mutual appreciation. It's just a good, well-worked face-on-face match. Um, and it's definitely a one, again, that I would, I would recommend going, going to see. Not going to see, but watching it on YouTube. Um, just definitely give it a watch. Uh, if you've never seen AJ Styles outside of WWE, uh, well, firstly, go check New Japan, but then go check this. Um, <laughs> and then you'll see yeah, just how awesome AJ's been for such a long time. Watch anything in TNA from like 2006. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I think that's when it sort of kicked off, wasn't it? Yeah. I didn't like uh, the ending to this one. You know, it's the, the match that I'm thinking of. He just wins with a splash, comes off the top. Is it that one? Yes, it's that one. Yeah. 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 Uh, it was it going was well up until that point. It was like um, something fucks up. It's like the ending <clears> gets <throat> fucked up. He, he, he's on the outside. He hits. Sting with a bicycle kick. Sting yeah. goes back in. Sting on the on the deck, and it looks like AJ's gonna go for his four fifty, but oh, he hits just like a weird splat or the spiral oh, tap. Off yeah, off the rope. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry, it, he's either gonna go for his four fifty or a spiral tap. Either one would have looked actually better than what he actually hit, and he wins. 
It's just like, yeah, uh, that's yeah, fucking kind of, match. But it's like, a, I was surprised at that, man. It was banging because he had that spot outside where yeah. Sting just runs at him. AJ gets out of the way at the last minute and Sting just goes through the barricade. In through the barricade. Yes. It's just like, yes. oh, he hits him with that much force. Uh, but yeah, you know what I mean? They, they played that mutual respect angle really well, yeah. didn't they? Yeah. Um, and it was obviously Sting's hometown. They were talking about, like, you know, potentially if Sting loses this, he might retire. And, you know, this was all kind of um, AJ won, but then left a ring and told Sting to get back into it. You know, saying, this is your moment, this is your people, go talk to him kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Sting cuts a promo for, cuts like, a like, promo. Yeah. But, yeah, barring the ending, I, I kind of forgot about the ending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just seemed really nonchalant. It just came out of nowhere. I was watching it. I looked away. I saw him do the, the sort of splash out of a peripheral. I thought, oh, that's okay, it's okay. I look back at it, it's like, oh, it's finished. Okay, right, okay. Well, forget about that bit. Um, <laughs> but yeah, still a good match. Um, go give it a watch. Mr. Connolly. Right. Then, beat the electric uh, cage match. No, I'm not going to do that. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I decided I had to go and watch and include one something from like sort of 99 to 2001 WCW because. As terrible as it is, I absolutely love watching that back. It's just car crash TV at its best. So I'm just going to go with the stuff with, uh, with Vampiro. Ooh. Especially the, <laughs> the, 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 the human torch match. Shit. From Great American Bash, I think it is. In <clears throat> Let me check. I'm sure it's Great American Bash. Yeah, which is basically... Yeah, Great American Bash it is, 2000. Uh, basically, the... It's an inferno match. Uh, to win, you've got to set your opponent on fire. They've done, they've done a first blood match on Night Raw for free. They've done a, a graveyard match where he, he hits Sting in the head with a tombstone. Uh, again, on Night Raw. And then the pay per view before that, they've done all that be- leading up to that. They had a one on one match, you know, as you do. And then oh, the sorry, following one. Uh, gra- oh, fiend style. Yeah. And they're great American bash, like I say. They have a they have a human torch match where you've got to set your opponent on fire. And basically they just decide that Sting decides that to give himself a bit of an advantage, he's gonna raise the, the torch up above the, the nitro vision thing, the Titantron. So the torch is up there that they've got to use to set the other person on fire. Because Vampiro's apparently afraid of heights. As you do, you know. So, so they're they're having this thing, and in fairness, Vampiro is. I, I loved him in two thousand in in WCW. I thought he was amazing until, until he started doing the ICP thing, and that was me done. Then gonna be doing clowns. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, leading up to that, um, he just he just batters the hell out of him. He douses Sting in in petrol and everything. So Sting's fighting the entire match doused in petrol. And then they climb up on top of the end. And <coughs> as you know, as you do, you know, when you're about 40 feet in the air, they decide to put the lights out and just keep having Sting's lightning effect going on as they're fighting. Up on top of the Titan Tron and everything. And Sting's there, as I said, doused in petrol. Vampiros must have a load of it on himself as well, where he's poured it on. And they're just battering the hell out of each other. Well, it's just the lights keep going out off and on while the lightning's on. And in the end of it, it's literally a case of Vampiro just set Sting on fire. And Sting's there on top of the Titan Tron, just fucking engulfed in flames. And basically decides the best way to do it is to do a front flip off the top of the Titan Tron <laughs> through the stage. Human and torture. then so he just jumps off, he's just there, and there's just smoke pouring up from the stage and everything. They're all everyone's just there. And like the commentators sell it amazingly in fairness to them all. They're just like, what have we just seen and stuff like that? And they keep referring to him as Steve. They keep referring to him by his name and everything. It's like, we've just watched Steve kill himself and everything. It's like, why has he done that? <coughs> and one of them's like, so one of them's like, oh, well, you know, it's it's easier to get help from down there, I suppose, than up there. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but we just watch. And it's like, no, so, so then this show replays. You know, you physically, you know, visibly upset by it. Let's put it on four times in a row as a replay. <laughs> Oh, have I not heard of this match? That's awesome. Oh, mate, the whole the whole stuff with Sting and Vampiro for about six weeks went on, and it just some of the most bizarre stuff I've ever seen. It it could basically they should have had at the end of the match Russo just come out and sign the screen, just with his autograph and just say that's me. I done that. <laughs> just like alluded to, that's all, folks. Yeah. 
Russo's head come through the circle. Yeah, it's just it's so it's so weird, and it's just like sort of because normally with the Inferno ones in WWE, it's like Kane's arm got set on fire or yeah. he's fucked it, and that was it. And this literally, you just see his entire body go up. I think because the lights went out, and then he goes up in flames. I think they swapped it, so it was a stunt man. But still, just the effect of it was so amazing. And then him just sort of trying to save his own life by doing a flip off the Titan Tron onto the on the thing, which was blatantly a, a crash pad and stuff, but still looked amazing. Wow, that's like 20 years before the Fiends, before all yeah. the Fiends on fire and shit like that as well, which caused, mm-hmm. you know, such a, 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 a thing. It's like, wow, that's awesome. And you got a full flip out of this one. Yeah. It was either that one or it was going to be the one we had with Rick Steiner where Scott Steiner set the dogs on him. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Steiner sets oh, two shit. Jobermans and Rottweilers onto Sting oh, my in 99, I think it was. And it was between, <laughs> between them, two for us to walk to, to <laughs> make, But it was just, honestly, 99 to 2001 WCW, just go back and watch it all. The pay-per-views is just amazing because they recap it all on Nitro, but like the Nitro stuff. But the pay-per-views are amazing. If you want to see just awful, awful stuff, but you can't take your eyes off it, just go and watch <laughs> all that stuff. Crash. I think yeah. I tried watching it a few years ago because I'd never watched <laughs> WCW back in the day. I think uh, a couple of years ago, I tried to watch the pay-per-views uh, from like 96 onwards. And yeah, I think I got about R3 through 99. I was just like, I ended up just flicking through, watching certain <laughs> matches kind of thing. Uh, <clears> you know, just watching the cruiserweights and stuff. And then I was like, yeah, about, I'm done. Uh, I think I got to see that triple cage match I think they had in one of the pay-per-views <laughs> the David Arquette thing the ready to rumble cage yeah yeah but they actually had one in didn't they in a pay-per-view uh, yeah with, there was the one where David Arquette was champion oh of course yeah, David Arquette def- yeah. defended yeah, yeah, the championship yeah, yeah. in the ready to rumble cage match and stuff with that's uh, Jeff and DDP, DDP. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you know but uh, yeah, I have gonna have to watch these at some point because, like I say, say it's just car crash TV. What's not but to yeah, appreciate? They, just just watch that one back though. It's definitely the human human torch match. It's just right, right. it's just amazing. Mr. Carver, we see your electric cage, <coughs> isn't it? <laughs> Fireman on fire off the top of a Titan truck. What we got? What we got? Oh, we're going back to Earth. We're, we're just going normal. Um, this is from an episode of Nitro from. 1999 April versus DDP. Um, slap bang in the middle of the card. Championship match. DDP is the champion. Bang! He's a heel champion. Uh, I think Roddy Piper made the match early on in the night. And for some reason, he, he got sacked. So he got fired. Uh, <laughs> what, during the match? <laughs> no, no. Like, <laughs> after making the match, it's like, what the hell? So, right, no. he, he, he's out of the building. He's gone. Um, so there's this match. If you think of, can you remember back in Cena versus, um, this is sort of on that level, Cena versus HBK in London, where the match was just went for an hour and it wasn't yeah. supposed to go for an hour and it's really, really fucking good. This is kind of has that feel to it. It starts and it just starts slowly and um, DDP's just working the crowd the crowd are giving him so much fucking shit he's giving it back to him um, he, him and uh, him and Sting they're, they're locking up they're doing the usual fucking test of trend, blah, 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 beating the crap out of each other kind of stuff um, the match goes on goes on DDP goes to work the crowd again he's like oh, you ain't got nothing the crowd is just really blah. he's really riding up the crowd the crowd are really, really, really against him, and they don't stop. The crowd, you just see the crowd around the ring, hard cam everywhere. They just all of them on their fingers, ah, giving it all fucking shit. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so throughout the match, as Sting, well, towards the end of the match, as Sting hits a his Scorpion death drop, gets the pin. One, two, three, he wins. The crowd just goes. In the world, crowd. it's kind of like the um, the Canadian Stampede crowd, just a bit under. They don't make the crap. They don't make the hard cam um, shake, but you can see them really, really, really into it. They really hate DDP, and they really love Sting in this match. So it's it's just a really good match just for that aspect and the aspect that it goes on 
you, you got the feeling that it wasn't meant to be as long as it did. I think it went for maybe 20 odd minutes, possibly supposed to be like a 10 minute match. <clears throat> but it just. The audience. Yeah. Just went, yeah, yeah. The audience was just like, ah, throughout the whole match. Bill Klein and Sinker, they just reeled them in. Uh, good payoff as Sting wins. He's a title holder. Uh, crowd goes home happy. But as I say, smack back in the middle of a night run. It's a world title match. It's a world title match match in the middle of a night run. They they loved it back then, though. WCW would give away world world title matches on Nitro on a weekly basis. (laughs) (laughs) And and title changes as well. In the middle of the show. If you you go back and look through the things of how many title changes there were, like in WCW, just on TV, not just on Nitro, I think on Thunder as well. They'd have people dropping the titles and stuff on Thunder. It's Thunder. Just, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the ratings, baby. So it's what, got the worst, uh, the worst referee as well, Mickey J. <laughs> Mickey J. You're like you'll blatantly see him. He's, he's counting with his right hand. He'll touch you up with his left hand and tell you to <laughs> kick out. Like, oh, God. <laughs> Fucking stop it, idiot! God, it's annoying. It's crazy, though, isn't it? <laughs> stuff like that can sometimes get overlooked, but a ref, man, we can, or we can make or break you know, a match sometimes. If you've got a bad ref, man, you hear him doing things or you see him doing things, it just totally throws you out. So <laughs> that moment of disbelief, you're like, oh, fuck fuck's sake. So, um, what's you two guys, obviously the WCW guys, you know more about it than I do. What's uh, on a sidebar, DDP? Do you like? Do we like him? Do we not like him? Was he all that? You know, I mean, it would be like the people's champion before there was... Consid- considering when he started, he was like 40, yeah, he? he was, yeah, 38, he was really 38, something, like something like that when he started. Yeah, <laughs> so it, you know, he did come in, it was really late, but I mean, he, he was he was what he was, in fairness. He he did come up with some good stuff. I did, I, I was always a big fan of the old tornado clothesline thing he used to do from the from the foot grabbing stuff. Yeah, he stole that from Foley. I, I, I always, I always, I always loved that. Um. Whose manager was he? Was he the di- was he the it's diamond Scott Hall. studs? Scott Hall. Yes. yes. Scott, Scott Hall, Hall, the diamond studs. The diamond studs. The but diamond he was, exchange. He was Honky Tonk Man's driver at WrestleMania 6. Yes, he was. Scott, Scott yes. Levy was in that group as well, wasn't he? Was he? I remember when we, did the work, when we did the research for the Raven episode, there was mention of, yeah, I'm certain it was, you had Hall... No, no, Nash, oh, yeah, Nash yeah. DDP, and Scott Levy, or Johnny Polo, whatever he was going, Johnny not Johnny Polo. Polo yeah, um, yeah that, that was a little uh, three-faction kind of thing, those three guys. So it was just kind of like, yeah, it just seemed really weird to me. And then obviously he was a manager for so long, and then, yeah, decided he wanted a bit of the action. And I think then they came fucked a- him up. They fucked him up on WWEF as a stalker. He's just like, why... <laughs> God damn it, the most popular person ever. That was t- for the record, that was because of Taker, though, wasn't it? They, Taker just didn't like him or something, refused to put him over and stuff yes. like that. And that's why Taker and Kane just absolutely destroyed him in Canyon. <laughs> I think it was in a cage match or something, wasn't it? They, uh, uh, they no sold everything and just destroyed them. <laughs> and then I think they've done the same to Chronic as well. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah, and he was basically one of them. He's, yeah, he was, well, cr- crush, crush, was, crush was in the. The thing with him, wasn't he, Brian? Brian, Brian Adams. Adams. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he was thinking face for all of them, and he still just not annihilated him. It's like, wow. <laughs> Take him, man. As much as he's a legend, he, he, he'd be a bit, <laughs> bit of a, of a bastard. Like <laughs> <laughs> I'm not telling um, him that. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I'll just <laughs> sit there and play video games instead. Um, but no, that's, that's, dude, I can't top any of those. You two guys have absolutely done awesome. I've just kind of turned up with my shitty little teenager because <laughs> you, you lot have given me fucking forward flipping firemen and electric. Uh, I'm just glad, I'm just glad we didn't, nobody mentioned Victory Road. <laughs> Oof. Bullshit. Oh. Bullshit. <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> yes. Oh, Damn. Uh, oh, and, but I, I, after watching it, I had to go and like sort of look back at other things as well. If you listen to Bischoff talking about it. Oh my uh, God, Bischoff does not hold back either. <laughs> He's like, so when, he, when, he, cause when he comes out, he says, I was either going to come out and delay things or I was going to knock him out myself. I think, hold on, this is Bischoff saying this, but then say, because he was, he was so wrecked, Bischoff, I think his direct quote was, a six-year-old could have knocked him out. 
Oh, well, but it goes to show with regards to Sting how many, ma- you know, we haven't even talked about his stuff with Vader or Rick Rude as well. Yes. <laughs> his Rick Rude stuff is amazing. The to stuff fair, that he's do a part two on this. Yeah, right? there's enough material because we're not even touched like you know, this not the squash, <clears throat> but how stupid was it not to put him over at Mania? Yeah, yeah. That so was the most illogical match ever as well as like he was against the NWO but the NWO decided to save him in that match and now if you look side. but now if you look back at it as well it's like sort of X-Pac comes out as part of DX is fighting the NWO but is now in the Hall of Fame with the NWO <laughs> <laughs> Just it's just, like, oh, this is why I love wrestling, though. It's just like it's, if you try to explain this to non wrestling fans, they would just look at you. Like, I mean, it's like mm-hmm. like now when we're talking about Robocop and things like that. <laughs> it's like, sort of, yeah, remember the match where Robocop come out and saved him? What the f- you want about? <laughs> the thing is, that I know that he's going to be watching this at some point, and he's just going to be watching this being like, what? Robocop? He would have actually like zero idea about like, any of this stuff. And it's just like, yeah, I just if it makes him go back and watch some of the old school stuff, though, that's you know that's the goal. Uh, but yeah, I definitely, definitely think we need a, a part two on this one. Yeah, let's uh, say Rick Rude, man. We've not even touched on uh, Vader matches, even though Vader's shit. Uh, <laughs> anyway. No, v- Vader, not- Vader is an amazing opponent for Sting. I know, if I know. Got, going back and watching them. And there's the old uh, coal miner glove match as well. Hey. I forgot about that one. Which one? <laughs> the coal miner glove against Jake the Snake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> with the, with, with the, 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 the first time, the, no, the first time the wheel come out, they spun the wheel for all spin these the fantastic, wheel, make a deal. Yeah, all these yes. fantastic matches, and then it comes up. The, the winner puts a glove on to punch him. <laughs> yeah, we we need to do a part two on this one. It's definitely there's so much yeah. more random shit we can talk. about. We're not even touched on Joker's. Sting as well. Joker it was Sting. Just a pop, mm. it, was, it was. It was. It was an interesting twist on the character. <coughs> so yeah, I've gone over the hour mark. So I am. Um, we've got to keep. You know what? I'm going to keep him wanting more. So we will, yeah. there will be a part two. We will arrange it, and uh, yeah, we'll. Oh, uh, myself. I didn't even start the show with saying it's showtime. Oh. <laughs> There's the start of part two then. <laughs> Not <laughs> bloody do it now. Uh, but no, both you guys, man. Thank you so, so much. I, no just, I, I know I could turn up on this one, talk bollocks for five minutes, and you know the good stuff. So, um, yeah, it's gonna be Mick. Uh, just normally plug socials, man. If you want to give a shout out to like your Twitter. No, oh, well, um, it's uh, Mr. Mick Eagle on Twitter, <laughs> Instagram, Instagram, all that stuff. All exactly the same one. Um, so yeah, that's me. I just Expect- again, it's just me talking shite. Expect take, a follow I, after that. I'm taking photos of me cats <laughs> <laughs> and suits, shoes and suits. You know, I've never yes. meet someone with a, a more awesome, unique, weird collection of shoes and suits. I found the Seth Rollins Hall of Fame suit as well, so I bought that. Yes, boo <laughs> 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 hoo man. Yes. Yep, that's the um, one. <laughs> genius, Mr. Palmer. Uh, I'm sure people obviously already know, but just tell them in case they don't know it. What's your give a give yourself a shout out, man? I am at Yari316 on Twitter. Um, find us on Facebook as well. On commenting on all the good stuff. All the wrestling groups. All the wrestling groups. It's indeed even. <laughs> Even about the left side as well. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. We do, do talk on there sometimes. Um, but yeah, so that's it basically. Uh, both of you guys have been awesome. You know, massive, massive thank yous for sitting here and talking to me, really, uh, and educating no me. Because, yeah, that's my tomorrow. I'm sorted, man. I'm going to go watch a man jump off the Titan Troll on fire. I'm going to go watch a man climb on the left cage. Uh, yes. And watch a man get hit, and watch man get hit by a glove. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That would be for the next one. That could be my first match for the next one. And I'll also go watch Malenko you know, kick ass for five minutes. Yeah. No so, worries. Uh, Ryan, awesome guys. Uh, thank you so much. 
and we will speak again soon. No worries. Catch you later, mate.